The G5 was one of the most capable tow towitzers of its time. It is still one of the best. Even though it has proved itself in combat, this artillery piece has not achieved the success it deserves in the international market. Today, we're investigating the G5, another South African artillery legend. The G5 was one of the Western examples of defying the Soviet superiority in towed artillery in the 1970s. Also known as Leopard, meaning Leopard, this howitzer served well in the South African Border War and the Iran Iraq War. The G5's history goes back to the mid 1970s. In 1975, the South African Defense Force, shortly SADF, began massive conventional raids into Angola and Southwest Africa, which is today's Namibia to eliminate the forward operating bases of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia. In those operations, it faced the 130mm M46 field guns, 122mm D-30 howitzers and 122mm PM-21 multiple rocket launchers. The SADF had the 88mm 25-pounder and the 140mm BL 5.5-inch towed guns, which were locally designated as the G1 and the G2 respectively. These Second World War vintage artillery pieces were no match to modern Soviet rivals, especially regarding the range. Initially, South Africa acquired some 155mm M59 long tom field guns as an interim solution and defined them as the G3. Then, it produced a limited amount of the 155mm Soltam M68, locally designated as the G4. Even though it did not meet the SADF's requirements, this Israeli howitzer provided a critical capability to design and produce modern artillery systems for South Africa. So, in 1976, the South Africans initiated the Sherbet 3 project. This project did not only include more capable artillery pieces, but also new types of ammunition, a new gun tractor, fire control equipment, a fire control computer system, and other accessories. Due to its upper tide policy, this country was under heavy sanctions from the United Nations. So, the Westerns could not directly support South Africa. However, they still provided some technical documents for the Sherbet 3 project. Besides, Gerald Bull, who had worked on the GC45 program before, assisted in the design of the new howitzer. The GC45s had been developed by the Poudrerie Réunie de Belgique of Belgium and Space Research Corporation of Canada as a joint venture. South Africa mounted a GC-45 on the carriage of a US 155mm M59 long tom for tests. Then it modified another six howitzers according to the requirements of the SADF. This work led to the creation of the G-5. The first two prototypes were tested in Canada and Antigua in 1979. Lightoton engineers Verkeers, today's DNL land systems, began serial production and delivered the first four pre-series guns to the SADF in 1982. This variant was called the G5 Mark I. The serial production variant called the G5 Mark II became operational one year later. The South African National Defense Force operates the 6x6 Samil 100 to tow the Havitzer. The maximum towing speed of the G5 is over 90 km per hour. The Malaysian Army uses the locally produced 6x6 Amdach trucks. As a standard, the South African Samil 100 towing vehicles can carry 8 people, even though the G5 has a 5-person crew. Still, in an emergency, 2 people can also operate the howitzer. Besides the crew, the gun tractor carries 32 projectiles and 48 charges. Using an extended tow bar, the G5 can be towed by any prime mover. This tow bar increases the combat weight to 13,850 kg and the length in the firing position to 13.1 meters. Thanks to the 79 horsepower air-cooled diesel auxiliary power unit fitted to the carriage, the G5 has self-propulsion capability. The howitzer can be driven at a maximum speed of 16 km per hour and has a gradient capability of 40%. It can afford a depth of 0.6 meters. Its 100 liter fuel tank provides a range of over 100 km. This engine also provides hydraulic power to align, lift, lower, spread and close the trail wheels and lift and lower the firing platform. Thus, 
The G5 can be brought into action in two minutes. The Harvester has slave sockets and pipes to couple the hydraulic system in case of auxiliary power unit failure. The G5's 45 caliber monoblock barrel is designed around the performance of the extended range full bore base bleed round developed by the Space Research Corporation. It is a single baffle muzzle brake and a semi automatic interrupted screw type breech. While the early barrels had a short life, this figure has been increased to 6,000 rounds in the current ones. The 155mm G5 incorporates a manually controlled telescopic pneumatic cylinder rammer mechanism, which can ram the projectiles in the chamber at a uniform position, whatever the elevation. Charges are loaded by hand. Elevation and traverse controls are manual. The G5 features a gun management system, providing the layer with all relevant laying data. It can acquire the target data via modern artillery target engagement system such as the AS-2000, which includes a muzzle velocity meteorological ground station and a crew communication system. The howitzer has the shoot and scoot capability. Its burst rate of fire is 3 rounds per 18 seconds. It can fire 2 rounds in a minute for an hour. Optionally, the G5 can be fitted with a temperature warning device which warns the gun crew of high barrel temperature conditions. Thus, a high rate of fire can be maintained while avoiding a possible cook-off. Thanks to its metricated panoramic sight and a direct fire telescope, the G5 has direct fire capability within a range of 3 to 5 kilometers. The howitzer can be taken out of action in 2 minutes, which gives it avoiding capability from the counter battery fire. Libya, Malaysia and South Africa are the G5's current operators. Iraq, Qatar and the United Arab Emirates retired the howitzer. Even though many sources claim Iran is one of the users, it's not. They probably misidentified the PLL-01, the Chinese copy of the GC-45. Some sources claim that Israel used this howitzer in Bekaa Valley in 1986, also probably a misidentification of the Soltam's M68 or M71. Even though Chile had planned to produce G5 under license, it gave up later. The G5 lost against the FH-77 in the Indian tender in the mid-1980s. Later, the infamous Bufosh scandal broke out, which revealed that Bufosh bribed some Indian politicians to win the contract. The crew of the G5 is 5 people. In the traveling position, the howitzer is 9.5 meters long, 2.53 meters wide and 2.82 meters high. In the firing position, it has a length of 11 meters and a width of 8.7 meters. The combat weight of the G5 is 13,750 kilograms. The 155 mm 45 caliber gun's range is 30,000 meters with a standard projectile, 39,000 meters with a base bleed projectile, and 50,000 meters with relap munition. The rate of fire is 3 rounds per minute. The elevation of the gun is between minus 3 and plus 75 degrees. The barrel can be traversed at 85 degrees in total when its elevation is above 15 degrees. The G5 Mark III has 35 modifications and improvements over the previous variants to enhance reliability and operational efficiency. It has an improved recoil buffer cylinder and replenisher. The newly added gas trap increases the recoil system's efficiency. The Mark III variant also has the G6 advanced breech and cam plate. It is equipped with a barrel temperature indicator and warning light. Besides, electrical power distribution to the top carriage is improved to accommodate a new advanced artillery communication system, muzzle velocity analyzer and fire control computer. The Mark III variant has better accessibility to the traverse bearing bolts. The traverse drive clutch, traverse drive shaft and elevation gearbox are also improved for easier maintenance and more efficient functioning. The G5 Mark III's new brake system automatically applies the brakes should the hydraulic drive system fail to stop the gun. When the auxiliary power unit is not running, the brakes are engaged and only released if the air pressure provided by the newly fitted air compressor is sufficient. Other minor modifications are an easier to read diesel tank dipstick, additional bottom carriage drain holes, improved trail leg stops that increase reliability and ease of replacement, dock clutch disengagement indication light, improved muzzle brake screw lock and improved hydraulic tank indicator. 
These modifications provide better performance, reliability and durability. Malaysia uses the G5 Mark III. The G5 52 variant with a 155mm 52 caliber barrel was developed in the early 1990s. Its base bullet unit is of the screw-on type which can be removed under field conditions if not required. The range of this version is 43 km. The G5 2000 introduced in 2002 is a variant of the G5 52 with an enlarged 25 liter combustion chamber. It can send a VLAP round to 75 km. The G5's coastal defense variant has a 155mm 45 caliber barrel. Its 39 km ranged cargo round carries 42 bomblets, each creating a 100 square meters lethal area. In a single compensated salvo, this gun has an 80% hit probability on a medium sized target at 30,000 meters. No user has chosen these three variants yet. Still, the 52 caliber version is the main gun of the T5 52 truck mounted artillery system. Besides, the G6 self propelled howitzer uses the 45 caliber variant of the G5. Even though the G5 became operational in the SADF in 1983, we could not find any combat record before 1987. This time, matchless range and firepower advantages were on the side of the SADF. During Operation Modular on August 17, 1987, the howitzer was baptized with fire. The fire of a South African G5 battery destroyed a T-54 by scoring a drag hit at a range of 20,000 meters. For the next 8 months, these guns eliminated many units, structures and vehicles of the People's Armed Forces of Liberation of Angola and Cuban forces in the region. During the Battle of Kaito Kwanofole, the G5s destroyed the enemy's headquarters, two radar systems, two SA-8 mobile surface-to-air missile launchers, five BM-21 multiple launch rocket systems, and six tanks on November 1, 1987. On the same day, two helicopters, two MiG-21s and one AN-12 at the Kaita Kwanafola airfield fell victim to the Sawitzer. Besides, during the battle, the G-5s destroyed two other helicopters east of the Kesesi River. Thanks to their range and accuracy, the Sawitzer stopped many Angolan Cuban attacks before they started by hitting them in their rallying points. Alongside the Astris II, the Iraqi G-5s proved their devastating effect during the Iran-Iraq war once more. The suppressive firepower and range of these two artillery systems also stopped many Iranian attacks before they started by hitting them in their rallying points. The G-5s, possibly donated by the UAE, are still fighting in Libya. The over 40-year-old G5, even with its 45 caliber variant, is still among the most effective towed howitzers. And it would not be an exaggeration to say the G5 2000 variant is the best in its class with its range advantage. This 155mm howitzer is still adding new pages to its saga. The G5 is undoubtedly a legend. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.